Sorry I've been gone for a bit. I had a lot of uh, non-Plan 9 chores to do. I did find time here and there to work on my file system for the Philips Wiz light bulbs, and now it's done enough to at least call it a version 1 release. There are some features I'd like to implement, but at this point it turns individual bulbs on and off. I can send it commands to set the colors, and it will take pretty much any command, and if the bulb doesn't accept it, it will read out the error message from the bulb. Um, to start explaining how I got this to work, I will start with NDB. So NDB is the network database. I've touched on it in some other videos, mostly dealing with uh, using it to set up network addresses and system names, and also using it to pixie boot other computers. In those cases, that refers to the database file itself, usually in lib slash NDB. Uh, NDB can also refer to the various programs in the NDB directory in bin. Uh, and they do things like um, handle DNS queries and the like. And there is also an NDB library for accessing uh, NDB files in C programs. see where is it here ah, here we go all right so this is the function that puts files into the file system I have a few variables here um, that come from the ndb.h so this uh, ndb one here points to a open ndb file the ndbs is like a scratch space for holding data we are searching through and ndb tuple uh, will point to the results of a search so first i uh, get the user that started the program um, then set up the file system tree owned by the user uh, set the root of the file system and name it wiz and make it a directory and now we open the network database so we can specify a file here or if we just put in a zero it will just grab the default network database for the system and that's off to this for loop to pull up every line with whiz equals bulb and every um, line it finds with that the first entry should be the sys equals, so it will grab the value of sys, put it in the sys name, and then make a file in the wiz directory with the sys name owned by the user with read write permissions. And it will cycle through that until the next entry is a null pointer, and then exit out. And then have to remember to do this ndb close because uh, ndb open um, uses malloc. So we got to close it and that function there will also call it free on that to free up the memory. All right, this is not a super complicated um, file system. So whenever posting a serve, um, You'll get the option to have um, your own custom functions for the various uh, calls made by the nine protocol. Um, so in my case, all I really need to do is have something for when the service starts, when it ends, and just handle read and write. So this is just a, a flat directory. I don't need to worry about walking up and down the directory tree or anything like that. So let's see, here's the start. So when the service starts up, um, all it will do is just do that function that finds all the bulb files from the network database and makes them into a directory. And at end, it will post a note to shut down and then actually exit everything out. So that's basically all there is to start and end. When a read request comes in, it will call my custom read function here, fsread, 
and pass this uh, request pointer to it, this req type. Um, here I grab the name of the file being uh, requested. So that's held in the request. Um, and since I know that the file name is going to be the same as the system name in the network database, I can use that um, for calling the light bulb. So I call the bulb, and if I get no response, I respond to the request with my little no bulb error that I already have. Um, the response from the bulb will be a string of JSON formatted text, so I feed that into JSON parse. Um, keep in mind that the JSON library is specific to NineFront, and JSON parse also uses malloc. So remember, if you ever do use it, to finish up with JSON free to free it up. Um, I check to see if the JSON string has any useful data in it. And if it doesn't, I'll check to see if it gave me an error instead and grab whatever that error was. And uh, this read string here will satisfy the read request. So it takes the request and whatever you want to read back. Um, and anytime you do anything that takes a request, it always expects a respond of some sort at the end to finish up. So in this case, you can pass it, you know, the request that came in and the error, if, you know, nothing, no errors get reported, it just reports a nil and uh, won't report any errors at all. When it comes to accepting write requests, we need to get the number of bytes coming in. So that's this if call count. And in this case, uh, we need to set the bytes that we're writing out to that, and then also grab that value for my own local variable, because I'll need it. Um, here I went with this emalloc 9 p uh, I came across it reading the 9 protocol man page. It says it works like malloc, but has some error handling abilities. I haven't found a way to blow it up yet to see how it handles the errors, but it works fine for now. Um, then I move all the data that comes in on the request into my input here with the number of bytes. Um, now, I'm not trying to store this written data to the hard drive or anything like that. So I pass it off um, to this function that will parse it and give me back a sort of JSON formatted string that the bulb will hopefully interpret as a command. Um, if that fails, it will let me know it failed. It'll respond with that error, free the input, and return out. Um, doo -doo -doo. So next it will call the bulb up, you know, pass it the name of the file, which should also be the sysname, the command, and take back whatever reply comes back from the bulb. And if that's nothing, it will respond with no bulb, free the input and return out. If it does get a reply, it will again parse it into another JSON object, check to see if it was an error, and then respond back with any error that there is, free the input and free the little JSON string again. One other bit of uh, Plan 9 specific information here. As far as I can tell, Plan 9 doesn't seem to have any non-blocking form of read. Uh, this came up quickly in my case doing bug testing. If I uh, turned a bulb off, like I actually cut the power to the bulb, um, it would no longer respond. So when I call the bulb here, It'll print out, you know, it'll get back a file descriptor in the network to send the command to. You know, documentation says it takes, you know, about a millisecond for the bulb to actually crunch the stuff and respond back. So I wait and then I do a read to see what the bulb sends back. Um, if the bulb's not plugged in, it won't respond back and this read will just sit here forever. 
Uh, one way to deal with this would be to fork off a child process and given some time, if the parent noticed the some condition had not been met, it could go kill the child. Um, but a cleaner option was to use notify and alarm. So before I dial the bulb, I set notify and give it the name of a function, which I have up here. Um, then I set the alarm for one second. If read works, it'll go all the way through and then set alarm to zero, which just turns the alarm off. If read hangs, the alarm timer runs out and an alarm message is sent. Uh, my timeout function here checks to see if alarm came in. And if so, to send it this continue flag um, using noted here. Um, and uh, this will just sort of make whatever the program's doing move on to whatever the next action is. Um, and default will just make it just keep going and doing whatever it was doing. Um, so in this case here, if it does hang, it will, you know, kick out of read, which will then pass through, close the file descriptor and return zero. And then later on, I have a, a way to throw my own error if zero bytes end up being read back from the call bulb function. All right, here I'll give a little quick demo of what the file system looks like. So I can just read the bulbs and it will come back with the default stuff that comes back with the git pilot function. So return the MAC address, the signal strength. I don't know what this SRC is, but it always comes back as null. Um, the state, which is the on or off. Uh, scene ID, this one's set to a temperature here. I already turned it on to this 600 or 6,500. And so I can either echo with single quotes because otherwise RC will complain about the equals. I can do dimming 33. That will dim the bulb. I can also just cat and direct directly into it. So here I can just give it any sort of values. I can do several at once. It might be more noticeable if I did it with red. Make it a uh, purple color. Um, there's also the C, which is like the cool white, and there's also a warm option. And then there is a scene ID, and it has to do with the capital I because that's the way the bulb likes it. And you can give it various values. You know, four is party mode, which will make it just cycle through all the colors here. And it'll also take these single values for off and on and pulse is separate from uh, the set pilot function. So I have it packaged up as its own thing, which just makes the, the bulb pulse a little bit so you can find it. Um, and if you give it bad values like uh, you know, temp equals, but there we go. It'll spit back out whatever the error is from the bulb. So I'll put links below to the relevant man pages and a link to the WizBulb file system. Um, this will just work on 9Front. If you're using Legacy Plan 9, you will need to get the uh, JSON parsing library from the 9Front folks. Uh, future plans include adding uh, files for groups of bulbs, like if you have multiple bulbs in a, uh, in a fixture or you want to turn off every bulb in a given room. But uh, in the meantime, have fun.